important data property is known as escape velocity. Uh, he's saying, how come we added the day to February? Well, February has short days, 28 days, so we don't want its self-esteem to go low. <laughs> Give it one, one day. <clears throat> uh, notice the days that have the 31 days are July and August, back to back. Why? Who designed our calendar? Where does it come from? The Romans. July stands for Julius Caesar. Okay? August stands for his son Augustus Octavius, right? They're emperors. They deserve the 31 days. <laughs> okay? So if you go back to your calendars and stuff, you'll see there's very interesting history behind them. And of course, do you guys remember, know the knuckle rule for the number of days? January, 31 days. February, 28. March, 31. April, 30. May, 31. June, 30. July, 31. August, 31. Okay? It works. Julius Caesar. See, back then, they, they also had hand with five fingers in it, so, and they did, <laughs> Julius Caesar, Augustus, 31 days, 31 days, right? Then back to September 30, October 31, November 30, December 31. Do it, it'll work, okay? So teach your friends, because sometimes you forget, oh, did this month have 30 or 31? Well, just tell them the knuckle rule, it works, okay? <clears throat> okay, escape velocity. Escape velocity is a measure of how fast a, a rocket has to go to basically escape the gravity of that planet and be able to go launch into Saturn and go to Pluto and outer space. How fast it has to go. For the Earth, you have to be able to go at a speed of 25,000 miles per hour or 11 kilometers per second to escape the Earth. Okay? If you go slower, you can still go into outer space and go around the Earth and become a satellite. Okay? A little bit slower, you can still become a satellite. But you know, if you want to really escape and be, go to uh, the outer solar system and go outside of the solar system, you've got to be able to go that fast. So if we ever do uh, interstellar travel, that's how fast we would have to go. And satellites can go that fast. It's not incredibly fast. 25,000 miles per hour. It's pretty fast, but it's not undoable, you know. Uh, if you look at the escape velocity of other planets, you can compare them to Earth. Of course, Jupiter's escape velocity is probably more than uh, Earth because Jupiter is very, very heavy, okay? So um, it's going to be a lot harder to escape Jupiter. If you go to a black hole, the escape velocity of a black hole is faster than the speed of light. That's why a black hole is black, because if a black hole, if a light gets trapped inside of the black hole, it needs to go faster than its own speed, and it can't. And that's why there's a region around the black hole which is black, because nothing can escape it. You've got to go faster than the speed of light to escape it. You see? Okay, oblateness. Oblateness is a measure of how spherical a planet is or a moon is, okay? Uh, if, the, if the oblateness is zero, then the planet is perfectly spherical, okay? Oblateness, zero means a perfect sphere, okay? But we know most planets have a little bit of oblateness because they spin this way, right? They spin this way. And because they spin this way, they, they tend to bulge out like this a little bit, right? So this side starts becoming a little wider. That's just the general law of physics and nature. When you take a pizza dough and you start twirling it like this, the pizza starts flattening out and getting wider like this, right? 
that's just the general log. It gets pulled out. So uh, generally, this li length becomes wider than this. And then the oblateness becomes non-zero. So for the Earth, the oblateness is 0.0034. So what that means, it's, it's uh, close to spherical, but not quite. <coughs> You can see here, this picture is a little bit exaggerated. The equatorial diam uh, radius of the Earth is 6,378 kilometers. The polar diameter from the uh, center to the poles, 6,356. It's only about 22 kilometers longer this way. So it's not very noticeable, 22 kilometers th uh, longer this way. If you had a very good digital scale of your weight and you took it and you weighed yourself, you would weigh a little bit less here than uh, over here, right? Because over, over that, the poles, you are closer to the center of gravity. You might weigh like a 0.1 pounds less here and 0.1 pounds more over here, okay? Uh, other planets also have oblateness, and when we cover them, we'll mention that. Jupiter, Saturn. Another property is called surface gravity, okay? So surface gravity measures, it measures a couple things. For the Earth, the surface gravity is called G, 9.8 meters per second squared, or 32 feet per second squared. So basically, the surface gravity measures when you drop something, how fast does it accelerate, OK? If you've ever taken a physics class or if you're going to take it, you, that's usually one of the labs we do. We measure the acceleration of an object, OK? But the other thing that the surface gravity also measures is when you weigh yourself on that planet, how much you're going to weigh, OK? So the surface gravity of the Earth, we're going to call 1. So this, this number, we're going to call surface gravity of Earth, we're going to call 1. OK, for example, let's say you go to another planet. Let's say Jupiter. Let's say I were to tell you, Jupiter, you go there, and then you drop an object, and you find out how fast it's accelerating. Let's say you find out that it's accelerating uh, 29.4 meters per second squared, OK? <coughs> so you find out your the acceleration of an object is 29.4 meters per second squared. This is a good quiz or test type question you might be asked. If that same person weighs 100 pounds on Earth, how much will they now weigh on Jupiter? A hundred pound person on Earth. If it's true that the acceleration of Jupiter is 29.4, how much will that person weigh on Jupiter? Okay, so how do we figure that out? OK? Notice what I did. I connected the two concepts. How fast does something accelerate? And the concept of how much do you weigh on that planet, OK? So the thing to do here is to divide these two numbers, OK? We know that the gravity of the Earth is 9.8. The gravity of the Jupiter, let's say, is 29.4. Divide them, find how much bigger this is than that, OK? Gravity of Jupiter divided by gravity of Earth, 29.4 meters per second squared divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. And I chose the number on purpose because when you divide, you do get a whole number. And it's unitless. The, the units cancel, and you just get three. So we would say the gravity of Jupiter is three times larger than the gravity of the Earth, okay? If you look at 
data tables of gravity of planets, they will often give you this number. Okay, the three. They will not give you this number. Because they don't really care about how fast something accelerates on that planet. They more care about the how much bigger the gravity is on that planet than the Earth. If gravity of the Earth is defined as one, the gravity of that planet is defined as three. This is what the data tables will give you. Okay? So if you are 100 pounds on Earth, how much do you weigh on that planet? 100 times three. Three hundred pounds. Okay. If you're two hundred pounds on Earth, how much will you pay? Weigh six hundred pounds. If you're three hundred pounds on Earth, you will weigh nine hundred pounds over there. Could you live on a planet that you weigh three times more on? It's probably not very good for your bones, right? You go there after a day or two, you're gonna feel sluggish already. You know, you barely can walk. You can't jump. Uh, it gets very hard for you to live. But if you live there, somehow, let's say you survive two years, three years, four years, five years, your bones might start getting stronger, stronger, stronger. Your muscles will get stronger. When you come back to Earth, you'll be like the Incredible Hulk, you know? <laughs> you'll be like, OK, what, would, what do you want me to lift? Okay. Because you will get used to that gravity, right? Now you'll come back and the gravity of the Earth will seem so light for you, you'll be able to pick up anything with your fingers, you know. So that's the ultimate way of getting, becoming a strong person, okay? The opposite is also true. What if you go to a planet whose gravity is less than the Earth, okay? Initially, you're, you feel good about yourself, you can jump high, you can lift things very easily. Then what happens after a while? Your muscles start atrophying. Right? And you get used to that gravity of that planet. You get weaker. Okay? Then you come back to Earth and ugh, your muscles are all not, you know, just nothing. Everybody can beat you up. You're no, you have no strength and stuff. That's why uh, astronauts, when they go to outer space, they make sure they do weightlifting so their muscles don't atrophy in the, in the satellite or if they go to the moon or wherever, you know. You gotta constantly do exercise because your muscles are gonna weaken on the, uh, on the moon.